So I just want to speak about two years of work of the OpenStreetMap project in IT. Um, so 12th January, uh, very major earthquake struck IT. You've got the OpenStreetMap map before the earthquake and one month after. That's something which is compelling. All this data was available in interpretable format, used by the responders very, very quickly. And uh, I just want to, uh, to flash out a couple of the neighbors. The first one was the availability very, very quickly of high resolution imagery in licensing that was allowing the Revity work to, uh, to be imported into the OpenStreetMap database. Um, the growing of this database uh, had uh, a positive effect by liberating some data sets that were closed before that, and some were reported into the OSM database. And the main neighbor is the OSM community and a couple of hundreds of people that have been uh, editing uh, continuously. This was the first phase of the work. Uh, a remote phase. Then we managed to uh, HOT to, uh, to get some funding to, uh, to get on the ground and organize a series of missions, of capacity building missions. So typically what we've been doing was coordinating and advising on using uh, in a clever manner uh, the OpenStreetMap resources but also trying to turn people into uh, intelligent contributors. And this was being done through trainings, uh, surveyings, and just editing of the OpenStreetMap database and the audience was brought uh, from international organizations to, uh, to grassroots communities. Uh, all this process was creative of uh, an ecosystem, so the community. And uh, one of the main neighbors for that were the relationships that art had before the earthquake, um, an ability just to package things that were allowing us to, uh, to train and to, uh, to have the right set of tools and the right set of hardware to uh, very agilely just move into four or five locations that were key uh, in IT. Uh, after a couple of missions, after three of them, uh, we managed to, uh, to gather all the trainees into creating a, um, a local uh, OpenStreetMap group. Uh, and some of this local OpenStreetMap group, uh, together with ART, has been working for the international organization of migration that were using extensively the OSM data, not only for producing uh, simple display maps, but also because they were using the uh, OSM data and the state ID with their registration database that we're using to plan the strategy of return of the 1.2 million people that were displaced. And um, that was the first time ever in the history of IOM that they had a database of that quality to allow this, uh, this kind of use and planning. Uh, the work that has been done with IOM was not uh, only just using OSM, but that was continuing and improving upon the baseline uh, and focusing on a, a couple of, uh, of objects that were of high importance uh, in terms of the, the next disaster that struck after the earthquake, the outbreak of cholera, and the preparedness of the next hurricane season. So this is one piece of work that now is widening the work of 20 of, uh, of Asian mostly originating from Cité Soleil, which is deprived of Ria from Port Prince, and they're actively mapping into a disaster risk reduction uh, scheme in uh, Taba and Cité Soleil, which are two, uh, uh, two communes of, um, of Port Prince. Beside of that, uh, we managed, together with other members of the community of OpenStreetMap, IET, and USAID, ODI, to put up a project uh, to map Saint Mark uh, and the commune of Saint Mark, which is a city 100 kilometers north of um, of Port Prince, and basically we had three months to uh, uh, map as much as object as possible. That's a really baseline project, and um, and turn those 30 years people uh, originating from uh, from those countries into serial mappers, and. Um, this is something that uh, that we we succeeded into doing, and um, 
this is uh, the last product of, uh, of the, the work of those, uh, of, those, of those young ones, which, uh, which is a, a very good quality baseline map of, uh, of the, the community. Um, by doing that, we also reached out to, uh, to other partners on, uh, on, on this territory uh, that were all again NGOs, but as well as uh, very grassroots communities. And I mean, we managed to, uh, to not only pass to the IOS skills that were around really technically mapping, but also engaging with community and developing a sort of mutual pride with being able to show as young people to the older what we've been able to do and to have all the pieces that were just being trained on uh, collecting data with, uh, with GPS and just falling asleep in front of GeoSN that was vibrantly just manipulated by a young guy. But uh, that would not be good just to say that the work in, uh, around OpenStreetMap at the moment is happening only through paid projects. Fortunately, we managed to reach out and create a network of, uh, of, of actors. And uh, I want to, uh, to flash out the relation that we have with IT Communitaire, which provide a lab from where we can provide training to anyone willing to, uh, to be a mapper in, uh, in IT. And, uh, and from this place, we can, uh, we can coordinate, we can, uh, we can design projects. And this is within this, uh, this place and this area that other community mapping projects happening on a voluntary basis just get kick-starting. This one is tap -tap map, which is uh, mapping of, uh, of all the, the local uh, transportation needs. And another one, which is interesting, is uh, the Soleil Leve project, which aims at uh, mapping the successes uh, of communities within this commune of uh, Port Prince in terms of achieving small things, humble things, but real things like cleaning rivers, cleaning canals, and, uh, and just improving upon the neighborhood in which they're living. Things that were happening on a voluntary, on a voluntary basis by some of the people and the trainees that um, that are uh, being uh, being enrolled with uh, with IOM. So that's all for me, and um, thanks very much.